Today we are talking about how to set up a Google Ads remarketing campaign. By the end of this tutorial, you will have everything that you need to know in order to run a Google Ads remarketing campaign. In today's tutorial, we're actually just gonna be running through basically these three steps that you see here on the screen. When people think about Google Ads remarketing, sometimes they can think it's a very hard setup or that it's something that's super complicated. And that's actually just not the case. There's lots that you can do with Google Ads remarketing, but I wanna break it down into this simple three-step process. The first step is installing the tag or, and or linking your account. This gives us the access to the data that we are wanting to remarket to. Then from there, step two is to build the audiences. And then step three is to use those audiences in our Google ads campaigns. And when it comes to Google ads remarketing, a lot of times people think about display remarketing, which is these banner ads right here. So if somebody goes to your website, then you show banner ads to them over the next 30 days and things like that. That's probably the most common use case when it comes to remarketing. However, I do want to also expose you a little bit to the other options when it comes to remarketing as well inside of Google ads, which namely is YouTube remarketing. So you can remarket to people on YouTube and show them videos on the YouTube platform, or even one that not a lot of people know is that you can remarket to people using search ads, your, your standard text ads. So I'm gonna be walking through basically this funnel right here and telling you everything that you needed to know. Now the first step here is to decide which data source you are wanting to use. You can see here I have Google Analytics 4 or the Google Ads tag. Now when it comes to these two data sources, they will both accomplish pretty much the exact same thing. After we go through and get the data sources all connected, building the audiences and the campaigns are pretty much the same from that process. But I do wanna walk you through how to set this up if you wanted to use the Google Analytics 4 tag, and also how to set this up if you wanted to use the Google Ads tag. Now I do want to stress that I have an or right here, which means that you don't have to go through and set both of these up in order to start running Google Ads remarketing. If you set up the Google Analytics 4 tag, you can go through and run all three of these different campaigns inside of Google. If you set up the Google Ads tag, you can do the exact same thing. So this is an or, I'm gonna go through how to set up both of these options so you have a full picture of how this works, and then you can decide for yourself maybe which one is best for you. So we are going to start with the Google Analytics 4 tag, but before I even start and show you how to link this all up, I do want to maybe jump into a Google Ads account and show you how to identify maybe if you already have one of these sources set up so that maybe it just saves you some time and you can move right into step number two. So I'm gonna come over here to a Google Ads account we're gonna come over this way. And this is Google Ads, this is the news user interface. If for whatever reason you see a different view when you log into your Google Ads account, be sure to click on this appearance button and click use new design. It'll say something like new, use new design or whatever. Right now, I can only see the option use previous design, but this is the newest version here. And what we want to do is we want to come over here to the tools under shared library, we wanna click that down and come over to audience manager. From here, we want to click on your data sources. Now this is going to tell us what data sources we are currently utilizing in our Google ads account for remarketing if we are utilizing any of them. Now you can see here that I actually have the Google ads tag, which is this one down here, and the Google Analytics tag both enabled in this example. However, you can see here that the Google Ads tag is currently in, inactive because in over the last 24 hours, it has zero hits, zero active parameters. It has two lists here, but that was from another tutorial where I was just kind of playing around on it. So it isn't currently active. But then you look at Google Analytics 4 and you can see that it currently has 64 events, one GA4 property, and then three lists inside of here. And if I click inside of these details, it gives you even more about this. So you can see that this is currently being used inside of my Google Ads account. And it even gives you a little bit more. So you can see here, Google Ads in use list. So I'm not using any ads inside of this for this particular one, but it is active right now. And this is data that I can start utilizing. So like I said, I am going to show you how to set up both of these options here. We're going to start with the Google Analytics 4 tag. And there will be timestamps down below in case you wanted to jump around inside of this tutorial. However, I would encourage you to watch this all the way through because there may be a small step that could really throw off the flow of this. So just keep that in mind. If you wanted to track through Google Analytics 4. We, of course, will need to head over to Google Analytics 4. And I'm assuming that you already have Google Analytics 4 installed on your website in order for this to work. So we have our Google Analytics 4 all set up. What we want to do from this point is we want to click on the admin right here down in the bottom left-hand corner. And then we are going to navigate over here to the Google Ads linking. And you can see I already have this all linked up and that is why when I look inside of here, I can see that these events are already counting and everything. But I wanna show you how you would go through and link this in case it isn't already set up. So you want to go through over here and click on link. Then from this point, you'll want to check, click on choose a Google Ads account. Now this is going to use your email that you're currently logged in with your Google Analytics 4 account with. So use whatever email has access to your Google Analytics 4 account 
and your Google Ads account. They, that email will need to have admin access to both in order to submit this connection. So keep that in mind. If you don't have admin access to both your Google Analytics 4 account and your Google Ads account, you will not be able to do this. So, but, so you wanna go through here and click choose ad account. I have access to lots of different accounts so I can go through and select one of these, but I'm not actually going to link a new one here because I've already gone through and done that. But once you've found your Google Ads account, just go through and click right here and then hit confirm and it will link that account. And then once that's done, you'll see this right here. And once that has been linked, then you can come back over to your Google Ads account and give it a 24 hours or so. And then you'll see this little tab right here underneath your data sources. Instead of it being down below here, you'll see it up top here with the details and it will start collecting that data. So now we have successfully gone through and installed and linked the account to our Google Analytics. And I want to really stress that this is an or right here. So you don't have to go through and set up a Google Analytics 4 tag and your Google Ads tag in order to do remarketing. You can do one of these steps and move on. But I do wanna show you how to install the Google Ads tag in case you are wanting to go that route for whatever reason. For most people, to be honest, the Google Analytics 4 is probably the route that I would recommend because chances are you already have Google Analytics 4 installed on your website, and then you can just go through and link that account, and then you don't have to put any new code on your website. The Google Ads tag will require a little bit more, you'll have to add just another snippet of code onto your site. I'm gonna be utilizing Google Tag Manager in order to do that. So what we're going to do in order to get the Google Ads tag on our website is we're gonna come back over here to Google Ads. We are in the Your Data Sources. Now, if you don't see this Google Ads tag here up at the top, you can go through and underneath here will be a little thing to like link this to your account. From here, what you wanna do is click on Details and then you're going to scroll down here to Tag Setup. We're gonna click on this. As you can see, there are actually three different ways, technically, I guess, two different ways, but three different ways that you can get this tag on your website. You can either in install the tag yourself, uh, you can hard code it onto the site, you can see here's the code where you can go through and add it. You can email the tag to one of your developers, or what I recommend people to do is to install this through Google Tag Manager, and I'll show you just how easy that is. Now this does require that you have Google Tag Manager set up as well, so keep that in mind, but that's why I mentioned a lot of people, if you're running remarketing, chances are you'll probably wanna go with the GA4 tag option instead, but let me show you how to do this. So we're gonna come over here to Google Tag Manager, and we are going to click on add new tag. We're going to call this Google ads remarketing, Google ads remarketing tag. And then we're going to click on tag configuration. And then here we're going to click on Google ads. And then we are looking for the one that says Google ads remarketing kind of convenient, right? Not too bad. And then if this is your first time setting up a Google ads tag, you're going to see here something that says conversion linker tag missing container. If you don't see this error, don't worry about it. Or then you don't have to worry about it because it means it's already set up in your account, but we're going to hit create here. And then we're going to want to enable this. So the nice thing is this is gonna be all built out for us. We're just gonna call this conversion linker. Then we are going to hit save. And then once we've gone through and done that, you can see we'll get the green check right there. And then you can see there's lots of like settings and stuff inside of here. The good thing is we only need to worry about one, which is this conversion ID. We want to come back over here to our Google ads account. We want to grab this number that they give us, this conversion ID right here. Copy that, bring that back over here paste that into your conversion ID spot. And then we're going to scroll down here. You don't need to worry about any of this other stuff. We're going to come over here to the trigger. And then you can either have this on the all pages or initial, initialization all pages. I recommend initialization all pages. It just means it fires very first because this is a remarketing tag. So we're gonna click on that and then hit save. And then once that is done, you want to make sure you go through and submit this onto your page. You can go through and give it description. So we're gonna call this Google Ads Remarketing. And then you can go through and publish that. And then congratulations, now the Google Ads Remarketing tag is on your website. And then if you wanted to triple check that these tags were working on your website, either the Google Analytics 4 tag or the Google Ads Remarketing tag after you've gone through and installed them, there's this nice little tool called the Google Ads Tag Assistant. You can go through and download this and add it to Chrome. When you go to your website and you just give it, a, you wanna make sure it's enabled, give it a refresh and then you click this down and you can see there is our Google Ads tag and it is currently green here, which is a good sign. If it's red or yellow, then there could be an errors there. And then we also have have our Google site tag right here as well for Google Analytics. So both of those tags are working. Like I said, you can have both of them on your website. It's not a bad thing, but you don't have to have both of these on here, just whatever one you're wanting to collect the data from. So now we've gone through and completed step one. Now I wanna move on to step two, which is building audiences. Okay, so in order to build audiences in Google Analytics 4, what we're gonna do is once again, click on this little admin button. It's going to take you to a view that looks like this, and we are looking for this audience tab right here. 
when you click inside of here and you can see here, it will take you to a view that has your current audiences inside of this account. You'll have a default one for all users and then any other ones that you built and the date that they were created. You'll notice here inside this account, if everything's linked properly, that these audiences are also showing inside of my Google ads account right here. I'm going to show you how to create a new audience in Google analytics for so we're going to click on new audience here. And then there are four different options when it comes to this building an audience, you can either create a custom audience, you can use one of their general defined audiences. And these can be really helpful if one of these four is what you're looking for. This is very e commerce focused may or may not be super helpful if you're doing like leads and things like that. But something to keep in mind, you can see recent activity non purchasers seven days inactive purchasers, or you have templates here. So if you wanted to retarget people based off of demographics, technology, or acquisition, you could go through and click on any one of those three right there. And then the last one is predict and if you are not running e commerce, you're actually not eligible for these. You can see learn more here. These are only eligible to people who are running e commerce as of now or in app purchases. So this is just a affiliate site or a lead site. So none of these really apply to me. Most of the people I'm going to recommend that you either stick with the general templates right here, or that you go through and just create a custom audience for yourself. So let me show you how to do that. So we are going to pretend that we want to remarket to somebody who has hit a specific page. So we're going to come over here, we're going to come to conditions. And then from this point, we're going to type in page right here. And we are looking for this one right here, page path and screen class. And then from here, we can go through and give it a condition. So anybody who's hit a specific page that contains these ones right here, and if you click right here, you'll see that Google will automatically go through and find all of the pages on your website. So let's just say this DIY electric fireplace, any pages that contains this one, I want to remarket to those people. So you can see, and then over here in the right hand column, it will give you an idea of how many people hit that page and the membership duration. So this is over the last 30 days. If I wanted to do a bigger audience, I could, I could ramp this up to maybe like a hundred. Now, when you go through and do that, you'll notice that this doesn't really change. I've noticed. Um, so just keep that in mind. This audience will probably be bigger uh, over a hundred from this point, but we're just going to keep this at 30 right now. You could set to the maximum limit as well if you wanted to do so. So then what I could do is just say that I go through and name this audience. So hit fireplace page last 30 days and then go through and save that audience right there. And there is our hit fireplace page last 30 days. But I do want to show you a very common use case for remarketing is excluding a page to remarket to. For instance, if somebody came through and hit your website over the last 30 days, but did not fill out a form on your website, if you wanted to create an audience like that, what you could do is come over here, create a new audience from scratch. You can go through and add your conditions here. And then what you're going to want to do is click on add group to exclude. When you click on that, you can then go through and exclude people. We're going to do the page path and screen right here. We're going to look for page path and screen class. And then you can add the condition, exclude anybody who hit a thank dash you page. Now, of course, this thank dash you page will vary depending on whatever your thank you page is. So if somebody goes on my website and does not fill out the form, then I will remark it to those people basically. And it'll exclude anybody who has already filled out the form on my website because I already have that information. So I don't want to remark it to them. So you can get super creative with these audiences and build basically an infinite amount of them or, you know, quite a bit of them inside of here. And that's how you would go through and create these inside of Google analytics. So your accounts are connected like we've done in the previous steps. When you come back over here to Google ads and give this a refresh, it sometimes takes a couple of hours, but usually you'll see your audience now populating inside of the, your Google ads account. And you can see here it is hit fireplace page last 30 days. Now you'll see right now that it is currently too small to serve or it's going through and populating. Now you do need to have at least an audience size of a thousand in order to run a remarketing campaign. And a lot of times it takes at least 24 to 48 hours for that audience to go through and populate. So keep that in mind when you are building these out that it will take a little bit of time for these to go through and populate inside of the account, but you need to have at least a thousand in order to run inside of the different placements. So that is how you can go through and build your audience for the Google analytics for tag. If you wanted to build them directly in Google ads with the Google ads remarketing tag, you can come back right here and then click on add a remarketing list. You can click on the website visitors right here. Then you can go through and give this a name. So we're just going to use the exact same audience for to keep things simple. So hit fireplace page. And then we want website visitors of a specific page right here. And then website visitors in the last 30 days. And then you can see this is just going to create us a general 30 day remarketing list, but we want to refine this action right here and then have the page URL contains, and then we can go through and add our fireplace URL right here, or we can make this even more defined right here. You can go through and give this an or, or an and action as well. 
And then same thing, if you wanted to exclude anybody who hit your thank you page or confirmation page, you can add this action here and then exclude anybody and then refine this action page URL contains thank or thank dash you, whatever your thank you page may look like. But we're not going to do that in this instance. We're just gonna keep it right there. And then there is this pre-fill option. I do recommend keeping this check. This is basically just going to backfill the last 30 days as opposed to starting the audience list today and then start capturing that data going forward. I generally recommend keeping this pre-filled segment right here. And then you can go through and give this a bigger description if you'd like. And then we can go through and create that. And this one is called Hit Fireplace Page. We didn't give it a super great description, but you kind of get the idea. And then now that audience is right here. You can see it's going through and populating. So we're gonna have to give that a little bit more time before we can go through and utilize those lists. So now that we have our remarketing list all set up that we're ready to use. Now, these ones are still populating, so they're a little bit small. So I'm actually just gonna use this all users of Corbin DIY for the example for the next part, which is right here to actually go through and build your campaigns inside of Google Ads. So we've completed step number one, step number two, it's now time to move on to the third step. We're gonna start off with how to build a display remarketing campaign, and then I'll show you briefly the 